Welcome, everyone. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician here to host the Market Buzz. This show looks at weekly setups across the U.S. market. Using the tools available on stock charts, we'll look for long time frame trades. Please subscribe to my articles and Twitter feed if you'd like to get more regular information. Okay, so uh, we're trying to rally and uh, it's working hard at it. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. There's some good clues out there uh, that Martin's follow through day might have actually followed through. Um, this is a big one. Uh, the New York composite made a new advanced decline line, new high. Um, anytime you're getting new highs in advanced decline, it's hard to argue that the market doesn't want to go up. So uh, the second question is what made new highs? And there's some sectors that are starting to outperform aerospace and defense, home construction, home improvement, life insurance, uh, waste and disposal, specialty finance, and the water index. Uh, so all of those industry groups made new highs this month. Um, but again, Martin Pring on the Wednesday show, if you didn't see it, I'd encourage you to go back and look. Um, we covered off Martin's article and his bottom feeder. And I think uh, with this advanced decline line, new highs and the bottom feeder kicking in, those are pretty valid. Uh, so you want to try and be long here, try and find something to to buy. If yield turns where to go, and I think, uh, you know, it's the the great one in hockey, Wayne Gretzky always used to say, I don't care where the puck is, I want to be where the puck is going to be. And uh, that sentiment is really important when we're sitting here with bonds staring us at extremes in terms of um, yield spread and in terms of gold and, and uh, bond yields uh, soaring so gold lows or gold highs and bond yield lows uh, what if that turns and where would we want to be positioned and I think uh, trying to figure that out is a pretty important component but I think obviously financials might be a place that start to bounce if you get a yield improvement but more importantly you might find that the REITs might be a problem if you already own them so that's something to think about and energy um, I've got a Tom DeMarc bottom on here and what what Tom DeMarc did um, he was he's a pretty famous guy uh, and there's a book out by Jason Pearl I think it is that is the uh, definitive guide on how to use DeMarc indicators. But the the real interesting thing about DeMarc is he tried to figure out when sentiment was either euphoric or washed out. And he would get to a, a method of counting both on daily and weekly charts about how far stretched we are. Now, I don't have DeMarc software, um, but the the energy sector is so sold off. Um, we might be looking at a, you know, some sort of a significant weekly bottom there. We started to get good price action this week with very high crude withdrawals. Um, so those kind of things start to add up um, as being something to look for. So anyway, we're going to cover off energy and just some ideas around that um, and why it might be a place to go. Okay, the schedule. Um, I will be in San Francisco at Golden Gate University at the TSAASF.org. Uh, so if you can uh, catch me there, that would be outstanding. Um, I'll be at the CMT Association meeting in Minneapolis uh, on September 17th. That should be wonderful. Um, I'm also showing up at the Toronto Money Show on September 20th, 21st, and if you could uh, walk up and introduce yourself, I'd appreciate that. That would be fun. And then uh, we have a Technician's Day. This is new on this slide today. Uh, we have a Technician's Day in Canada that we host once a year. Uh, this year it'll be October the 19th, and it'll be live and online. Um, so we'll cover off lots of different things, but uh, I think we usually have four or five technicians speaking uh, so I would encourage you to try and dial in and listen to that. If you'd like more information, go to CSTA.org and uh, that'll start to, to round out. Okay, let's jump into the charts. One of the things that happened this week um, that's pretty important. So here is the New York composite up here. And here is the New York advanced decline line shown with an 11 period moving average. Here is Here it is shown cumulatively. And here it is just on the daily spikes. And I always find that this daily spike stuff doesn't help me a lot. Um, I can't really figure out how to make head or tail out of it. Like as an example, this spike here looked pretty appetizing, but it was nothing more than a blip on the radar. 
But here what we have is a big spike yesterday up to almost 2,000. And what we see is that the um, cumulative advance decline line got up above prior highs, which is very bullish. Um, so if you go back and look, anytime it starts to break out above three-month highs, even it's a pretty bullish place. But back here in May of uh, 2018 was kind of when it started to ramp up and it went all the way into September. And then uh, we could draw a line on the underside and that was kind of the break in in the situation. So we had this uptrend line and I've been following this other line on the charts every week. If you haven't caught the the Canadian Technician Market Review on Saturdays, I'd encourage you to check that out on the YouTube channel. But I cover this line off every week. And one of the things I noticed was that this line was a little steeper than over here and a little less steep. <laughs> um, this here was steeper or this line was less steep than that line. But the bottom line is we're somewhere in between in terms of slope, but we were still trying to hold this on the New York and we have held it. So that's pretty bullish and now breaking out to new highs, hard to argue. And we can also see here that um, just using an 11 period moving average, there's lots of interest in going higher here. So I don't think we wanna fight the tape. I think we wanna start looking around. And one, one of the areas I'd be most cautious on is if you've been really heavy in the REITs for yield and all of a sudden yield starts to reverse, what you'll find is the top performing groups will roll over and some of the other groups that maybe were performing somewhat start to turn up again. And so um, I'll have a list of those or, or some of those for next week um, in the market buzz, some of the things that turned up and I'll, I'll check that data on the weekend. I use weekly data, so kind of have to wait for the weekend. It's also month end, so on the... Uh, Canadian Technician Weekly Market Review. I'll go through all the month-end charts, and I think that's a pretty val valuable experience because we are, uh, across the globe, we don't have a lot of strength, but perhaps this um, most recent push here, while everybody's bearish because of the, uh, the inversion of the yield curve, all of a sudden we start to get a push to the upside when when uh, some people are fearful. So I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for a signal. One of the signals I got was that the energy sector actually started to put on uh, a bit of a boil this week, which was nice to see. And getting a breakout on this advanced decline line told me that, you know, some of the things that were negative are starting to improve and perhaps we should follow that train. So let's look here. Um, one of one of the complaints I'm I'm frustrated with a little bit today is the Nasdaq. Whoops, sorry. The Nasdaq is only up 0.15, and you can see it's the worst performer on this list. And usually, I want the Nasdaq to be the best performer. So today makes me a little cautious. But when we click in on this chart, one of the things to notice on the intraday view is on Monday we had the thrust down, and then we. Uh, actually, this might have been Friday close, and, and then we popped up on Monday. But you can see that we're making higher lows. So two weeks ago, another higher low and a higher low. We hadn't been able to break out to new highs, and today we did, which is nice to see. And again, this is a 10-minute chart, so let's not get too excited. But when we scroll down to here, what we see is we did break through the prior highs, but we're sitting just below this 50-day moving average. And the real question is, do we have enough power to push through? Well, I think with that advanced decline line breakout, it's telling us to get more bullish. But the volume in here on the up days are very weak compared to the down days. So that's a definite concern, um, which bothers me. Now, this is for the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, not really my preferred source of data. Uh, but let's go to the NASDAQ 100. We haven't been able to quite break through here. It's trying to bounce. And if we look, it's up against its 50-day moving average, which has been pretty good friction so far. But we are starting to see a bit of a double bottom in the momentum. And I wouldn't, again, um, with the advanced decline line breaking out, it would suggest to try and be more bullish. Now, on the Alexander Elder candle, we're actually going from red to green here, which is quite nice. So a green candle on a weekly uh, gives you permission to buy and then you go to the, your daily and try to find um, daily breakouts that are starting to set up. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to talk about the daily breakouts. Looking at the PNF, you can see we've been consolidating here for a while and even if we go back um, 
to the September highs of last year, you know, we're still stuck in this range. And I, I know there's, um, uh, what would I say, very bullish people, um, commentators on TV talking about, you know, this bull market's got lots of room to run. And I'm thinking, well, it hasn't run anywhere for a year and a half. I think we're up 1.3% since um, January 2018. So nothing going on. Uh, got that from a friend of mine, Mr. Ellis, uh, this morning. But when you look back through the charts, you can you can pick a time period, any time period you want. And the bottom line is we've been in not only just a short weekly trading range, not only um, in the big picture here for months, we've been in a monthly trading range. And if we go down to years, we've been, you know, gently sloping up, but really nothing to say for it since last September. And again, uh, you know, we're September 1st starting tomorrow so or Sunday. So with all of that... Um, the, the main concern I have is this market's going to try and rally and we need to participate, uh, but be careful on the yield side if you're locked into the REITs and that kind of thing. Okay, so enough of that. Let's go on to technical scanning. And this is a really simple scan that I would encourage you to copy, steal, uh, import, whatever you want. But this line in here is a really important one and you can use it uh, Anytime during a month, you can go up here and change the, the number of start days, let's say 30 days ago. And, and when you do that, um, that's going to put it, whatever, July 18th. You could go back and set it to July 21st and then run this scan. That'll tell you all of the stocks that hit new highs in July of, of 2019. And what it does is it looks for this month high is greater than the maximum high over the last 12 months. So is rather than it having to be on a high today, it only has to be in a high somewhere this month. Now you can obviously do it for this week, uh, whatever, but this is just a really easy one to do. What made new highs? And when we run this scan, um, it would bring up a, a huge list of stocks, right? So that's okay. But the important one that I've put in here is I have a favorites list called U.S. Industry Groups, and I want to go and see which industry groups are breaking out to new highs rather than um, the the stocks itself. So at the end of the month, this is easy to do. Now this is going to bring up July. But what we want to bring up, uh, obviously, when we run this scan uh, let me go back there. When we run this scan, is starting it from today. So we're going to run this. And again, uh, just trying to keep track of what's breaking out, what is really starting to show up in these scans. And so when we get this scan result, you know, this aerospace and defense, so no big deal. Well, I just happen to have opened it. But look at this setup here. This is a year and a half running and looks like it wants to break out to new highs. So with that, that's a pretty nice chart. And... Uh, you know, warrants going into that area of the market and just seeing what's what's ready to pop because something's getting all primed here that's been sitting for, let's call it 20 months and is starting to move. And interestingly, we all know that Boeing is kind of weak. So um, something else is starting to pick up the slack in that group and it would be nice to go see what it is. Anyway, um, when we look through the, the list, Again, I want to stay away from the REITs, the real estate, that kind of stuff, the utilities. And the reason I want to stay away from them is because when yields were falling, all of these stocks rise. Now, conversely, when yields start to rise, um, these stocks wouldn't perform as well. So I'm, I'm not as interested in what has been the big winner for the last three or four months. I'm more interested in the new stuff showing up. And here's home construction, and I'm sure we've all heard that home construction is trying to break out. But here's the new high that it hit sometime this week. So that makes it look pretty good. And again, Toll Brothers didn't have a very good report, but I think it was DHI um, that had a much better report. And this stock just, you know, you can see it's breaking out. And earlier this month, it started to move. Well, it's just getting going here. And there's lots of room to run on this chart. If we looked at the weekly, we can see this nice um, setup here where it's trying to push to new highs. And that's just bullish. So uh, we want to keep track of that. So one of the things that we're, uh, we're looking for when we have these... Uh, 
whoops, one more. Um, when we go through this list is I want to find something that hasn't broken out yet. Maybe it's full line insurance or whatever. Mining is obviously the gold business. And so I think um, gold has been rising while yields have been falling. Uh, and maybe what this is, is a bigger opportunity as gold pulls back, find your names. And then the next time the market rolls over, be ready. Cause I, um, if, if this isn't when the market's going to make its big low, um, then we're probably, let's say, one more rally away or two more rallies away. We don't really know. But this gold index after breaking out of a seven-year base looks like a place we want to try and work towards. So we're going to skip out to a commercial. We're going to come right back and uh, I'll cover off a few more ideas for you. Okay, and we're back. And what we want to talk about now is this oil and gas business. And the reason I want to talk about it, um, it's been ugly. And uh, when we talk about train wrecks, this one uh, probably qualifies. The one thing to notice on here is that um, on this index, we can see that this is, uh, you know, the, the PPO got down here in 2015, then made a higher low in 2016, but that was ultimately the low, and then started to rally. And and trying to catch these rallies is obviously more difficult. But one of the big things that happened this week was the crude inventory data dropped by 10 million barrels and gasoline inventory dropped by millions of barrels. And so um, we don't have the, the ability to use hindsight. Uh, but what we can start to see when crude draws start to really improve, that might be a place to look. Now, the U.S. still has uh, the most crude oil production it's ever had it's doing 12 and a half million barrels a day and with that uh that that's pretty important um information but if we go look at concho resources just as an example and this is from the permian and you can see this is when they announced they're having trouble keeping up with their own uh drilling results or or trying to keep their growth going and i've covered this off a few times but they're they're trying to keep their growth uh accelerating but the decline rates on the wells are so fast so they end up not necessarily a fibonacci ratio but something like that where they drill one well then one well then two then three and in order to keep the decline rates going uh, stay ahead of the decline rates now they have to drill five well the next year they have to drill eight and the next week they have to drill whatever and as you keep working your way out you you have to keep drilling a lot more to keep any sort of growth in profile and on this day they kind of admitted that that was going to be impossible to keep drilling faster and faster and so what they were uh, going to do was they were going to stabilize and and do a consistent number of wells per year well the stock plummeted from 95 to 70 on the news and now we're sitting here consolidating near these lows so it's not every name that we want to jump into here that this doesn't make this a buy. Um, but if we look at um, Marathon Petroleum, so we just go up here. And if you ever want to know a ticker symbol and you're not sure, um, you can just type it into the top here. And in this case, we're going to pick MPC. So I'm just going to go over here and write it in. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to stay on my weekly chart. Now, you can see that this is coming down here and, and the PPO has been wandering down here for six months or whatever. And this week it made a new three week high. No big deal. But at least it's a place to look and starting to see a chart improvement like that as it starts to turn up. You can see the full stochastic is making a higher low. This is making a lower low. Um, the histogram is making a higher low. The PPO is making a higher low. All of these things are starting to kick in and suggest that perhaps this low is in for Marathon. Now, uh, the, the reason I like that in particular is that if energy was going to start to bottom after having a disastrous year, roughly from last September, right? This was an $85 stock to a $40 stock. Um, I know there are people out there every day who say you 
you can't buy the lows. But um, I will uh, talk about Paul Tudor Jones and uh, Tom DeMarc. And one of the things that they do really, really well is they find these major inflection points. And I think Paul Tudor Jones, one of his big sayings is, I make money on the turns when when everything turns and I'm sitting in position and it starts to take off. And that looks particularly robust. So again, where does your stop go? It goes right below the lowest low and a little bit off that, kind of a one-day ATR down there. So you got to give it a little bit of room to work. But these charts if they start to accelerate higher, this is a pretty nice place to look. And again, um, we're getting that advanced decline line breakout. Uh, we're starting to have some improvement in momentum here. So there's a reason to take a shot at some of these energy names. With that, uh, you know, obviously what we want to do, I have a chart list, imagine that, of uh, all the energy stocks all set up. And so we can go into U.S. oil and gas exploration and again, we're not trying to find the most beat up stock in the field. We're trying to find ones that are starting to improve. So here's, um, this is Luke Oil out of Russia, but you can see the PPO coming down to zero touching and starting to take off again. That would be very bullish. Nice place to buy it. It's uh, come down to 75 bucks from 90. Not a bad place to look for a turn. Now, this is just happened to be the last time I did this sort. I think we all know how to do the sorts, but we're gonna quickly run through that again. So when we click on view all and we go into summary mode, we have a couple of choices. And one of the choices is intraday or one month or whatever, and just see what stocks have been moving up. Well, I don't really care about these with the really low penny um, prices. So I want to look down for something that's larger. Anything with a scooter ranking is probably a clue that it's a little bit better. Um, so here's uh, PDCE, a scooter ranking of 50. But let's just click on the scooter and that brings up all of the top names to the top. So here's par. And again, what's the chart look like? Um, you know, it's been trying to push to new highs here. It's holding up near the top. And this is uh, par Pacific holdings. Anyway, uh, you know, the PPO is nice and high, holding up around five. Um, that, that isn't a sell signal just because it's up here. Um, if this can break through prior highs, they're obviously got something going that everybody likes. Going back in here, there's not many above 75, and so that's one caution I would have. But of course, we're working with a lot of them that are down here in the cellar because those charts are so beat up. So one of the things we could look for is charts going above 25. So uh, focusing in this area here, here's a whole bunch of them that have started to move. Um, so actually, let me go to the top and turn on my columns symbol. And... Uh, with that, we can go down again. We want to get into this 25 area. So here's TPL and just pull up the different charts and see if there's anything. This one's trying to double bottom, um, you know, so your risk reward is high. You're going to use the stop from the previous lows. Call it $140. And if this can start to take off, then something we're interested in. Um, some of the Canadian names are really beat up and they, um, Suncor is a good example. This one looks like it really wants to base and start to turn higher. They've bought back a billion dollars worth of shares. Um, here's Total trying to base and, and turn higher. Again, I'm not telling you the names to buy, but I, I want you to think about um, buying oversold. Now, these stocks can move, you know, uh, some of them can move 100% just to get back to where they were in in uh, may june july like it's crazy how far they've come down cnq's canada's largest oil company um, i own this stock but it's down here at 22 dollars, and that's i i didn't buy it yesterday <laughs> well actually i bought more yesterday but um the the idea that i'm trying to explain here is that these stocks are starting to double bottom we we started to get big five and ten percent moves in the in some of the names usually as a cluster when they start to you know, really start to get hit. Um, this this might not be a rapid takeoff, but at least you're aware of some sort of potential bottom. So if you like to bottom fish, this might be a way to go. If you're one of those people who always wants to own breakout stocks, this isn't your trade, clearly. Uh, but try and think uh, just somewhat from where your stop would go, where you get to put the, the uh, purchase price and, and then start to look from that perspective. I think there's some really nice value here. Some of these are paying high yields. I think this one pays 4%. Um, Exxon Mobil, uh, if we just click on this one, 
it's not my first pick by far. Um, but if we go here, it's paying a f almost a 5% yield and, you know, massive cash flows and all that kind of thing. But it's been trading in a range for three or four years here and hasn't done anything too exciting might be the right word uh whereas cnq has been buying a lot of uh beaten down assets at very low prices and if it was to start to turn that would be a nice one now there's kind of 30 canadian energy names i put together a really comprehensive short list of stocks i want to watch and i'd be following the ones in that group rather than looking at the vast array of of two or three hundred try and get your list down to a few that you want to trade and i called mine exceptional all oil and gas weekly and I created this chart list and then I'm going to work from that. So from today, some of these are down, you know, relatively hard. They have bounced. I think Kelt Exploration is up something like 15 or 20 percent the last couple of days here. Uh, doesn't look like much on the bottom of the chart, but trying to bottom down here where it's 2016 low was. If it can start to break out, that's great. If it's too early, well, your stop is nice and close, but at least you got some ideas there to go with. So um, when you're looking at these charts, um, uh, sorry, this one was 10%. There's another name that was uh, up a little bit more. But the idea being, uh, I, I fully get it. If you're a momentum trend player, only buying breakouts, this isn't your trade. If you're a person who likes commodity reversals, and commodities, again, let's just pull up a CCI indicator because there's a reason for this. Okay. When you make a commodity channel index, what it does is it goes from extreme lows to extreme highs. And what you want to do is try and trade that and then obviously sell near the top and then buy near the lows and sell near the top and buy near the lows and sell near the top. And this commodity channel index, that's the whole idea in commodities. So commodities are never a buy and hold stock. You don't own them for 10 years. You own them while they're going up and you sell them before they go down. <laughs> um, easier said than done. But this CCI is an example on a weekly chart. Not a bad idea. And you're trying to find names that are going to make a hard reversal. Um, one of the charts I mentioned a few months ago in the lumber side was called OSB, Oriented Strand Board. And we had this huge low in here and I said, hey, if there's a place to buy it, it's probably here and not a bad pick. So anyway, it bounced up. It's pulled back down. Now it's trying to go higher again. This thing pays an 18% yield. Um, and it makes the particle board um, that you would use on the side of a home or something like that. So you see some of these names starting to accelerate. I think they're great picks. This is going to make new three-month highs here this week. Um, things like that are a really nice setup. So as we go forward, uh, one of the things, let's just say that New York advanced decline line starts to break out and keep running, that's a clue that the market wants to go higher. And so um, as much as I actually thought this would be the place where the Russell was going to roll over hard, uh, we now have all of a sudden this advanced decline line data telling us that things want to push higher. And so we'll change our tune. We'll try and find a, a new trade to do. Um, some of the breakouts, uh, that scan I had earlier for new 12-month highs, you can run that on the New Yorker, on the NASDAQ. Um, using this uh, high and then here, I have this just set up so you just take it out. It might get too many names to do both exchanges at the same time. So just do one at a time. And then by slashing this out, you get rid of it. So with all of that, I want you to um, think about finding some areas of the market to get into and if you're in some of the areas that have performed really really well just set a stop that you're comfortable with and if it starts to take you out of those trades let it um, but find some of these other ones that are big opportunities as we head into month end so with that thanks for taking the time to join me on market buzz market buzz airs live wednesdays and fridays at 10 30 a.m eastern and 7 30 a.m pacific time on stock charts tv you can also catch replays on the stock charts youtube channel or on stock charts tv which has a running list of technical charting informational shows thanks everybody bye-bye